Chad, we're getting ready for the big day, January 14th. We'll be fighting for the UFC weight title. How does it feel, man, to be, uh, you know, in that contention to, you know, be the number one contender and be fighting for that UFC featherweight title? Uh, it feels great, man. Uh, this is a dream come true for me. Um, I mean, it's been a very fast rise to where I'm at. Um, it's been about three, a little over three years now. So, uh, I mean, this is just a great experience. I'm soaking all this in. I'm, you know, up here at a great camp and, you know, great coaches, great teammates. And, um, I mean, I'm just loving my life. I basically get to train and be healthy for a living. And, uh, you know, I get to travel all over the world and hang out with all my buddies on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, everything is going great. I mean, this, this camp is, is going good and I'm loving life. Awesome, man. Now, <clears throat> explain to us, like, the feeling, like, you know, when you were, wh wh what were you doing at the time that you received the call that it was official, you're the number one contender, and what just went through your mind at that time? Uh, I mean, this is kind of a whole tricky situation. I was actually supposed to fight Jose Aldo um, about six months ago. Um, we, we actually took a fight with Hani Yaya instead. Uh, Jose got hurt, and they told us that he wasn't going to be back for at least six to nine months. And um, I, you know, had I had 10 fights under my belt at that time, and you know, still young in the sport, wanted to keep competing. I didn't want to just sit on the shelf and wait. So we, we opted to take another fight, you know. And I, you know, I believe in my skills, and I believe that I trained hard enough to, you know, beat anybody in my division. So you know, we took the fight. It was a big risk, but you know, I won. And uh, you know, after that fight, it was kind of something that we talked about with the UFC. My managers were working on a deal, so it wasn't like any just one time. Like, oh, you're now the number one contender. It's kind of something that we knew, and we were just waiting on that that official contract to get emailed over. But I remember the day that I signed the contract. I put it on Twitter. I was super pumped and uh, just knew that you know this is my time. This is what I've you know been doing since I was five years old. It's what I've trained my body to do my whole life, and you know it's finally here. So I was super excited. Everybody knows all the great achievements that you had at Hanford High School and then on in college at Cal Poly. Um, who was the person that was pivotal in inspiring you or, or getting you motivated to take that next step and actually jump into the world of mixed martial arts? Uh, Uriah Faber actually was the person. I have known Uriah since I was in high school. Um, he was in college. He actually was recruiting me to come to Davis. Uh, I ended up going to Cal Poly, um, but we kept in touch. My, my coach at Cal Poly actually ran wrestling camps every summer, and he would bring you know all of us wrestlers from Cal Poly to be uh, instructors, and he would bring in a few... Uh, you know, top level, top level wrestlers from other colleges around Uriah was one of them. And uh, I remember Uriah, it was my freshman summer, um, my first time at the camp. Uriah uh, was training for like his third fight. And he was rolling with a bunch of wrestlers doing jiu-jitsu and he kept hurting everybody. And so nobody wanted to roll with him. All the wrestlers were like, screw that. But uh, I wanted to try it, so I jumped in there with him. And obviously, I mean, he submitted me a hundred times. But I didn't know what I was doing. but. <laughs> I mean, I kind of fell in love with it then, and you know, he told me right there, he's like, dude, I think you could be good at this, and he's like, finish your college career, try and go after that title, and uh, you know, I'll have a place up here at Team Alpha Mel in Sacramento. And so, um, you know, the day after I graduated Cal Poly, I put all my stuff in U-Haul, and uh, you know, me and my wife moved up here, and um, you know, I've been training and loving it since. And we all know that the uh, official viewing party for your fight, because your fight's gonna be in Brazil, of course, yep. but out here in the States, in your hometown, Hanford, California, big viewing party. We're going to be watching the fight all together and rooting you on and hoping that you bring that UFC title back to the USA. Um, but what, what are some of the you know best memories that you have of Hanford, California, and some of the you know things that you cherish about growing up in Hanford? You know, Hanford's a pretty small town, or it was a lot smaller back then, and it's still pretty small. But um, some of the things that I remember and I cherish the most is, is just spending a lot of time with my friends. I, I'm really big into hunting and fishing, and you know we used to go up to Shaver and Dinky, and you know deer season would open, we'd be up there almost every weekend. And um, obviously that is a huge part of my life. I still do it now. And um, also wrestling. I mean that that was probably what it, one of the things that consumed my life the most. Um, you know the weight cutting, and um, obviously it was hard. But looking back on it now it was. It was something that I needed to go through then, and I'm glad I did it now because, or then, because everything now seems so much easier, uh, you know. And, and I feel like it just prepared me so much more for what I'm doing now, how I'm making my money, and you know, competing and trying to go after that UFC gold. So, um, those are some things, and uh, you know, Hanford's a great place, and I'm glad I'm from there. So, it's a cool place. Awesome. Now, anybody in particular, any individual, or maybe a, a group of people 
that uh, that maybe uh, you know helped you to keep you involved in sports and, and wrestling while you were you know in Hanford at the time? Yeah, my father, uh, Alvin Mendes, was a huge inspiration to me. Uh, he actually got me involved in wrestling when I was five years old. I was a very hyper kid and needed you know he wrestled through high school and uh, I needed something to channel my energy. So he thought that I'd be good at wrestling. Uh, I actually still remember my driving to my first wrestling practice ever, and I just uh, remember picturing it with you know turnbuckles and just the ring and like WWE yeah. and, and I remember walking in the room and it's just mats and I'm like looking around where's the ring at you know and um, but my dad started me there he actually coached me from five years old all the way up into high school um, you know I remember him taking me to tournaments every weekend we get up you know depending on where it was sometimes five six o'clock in the morning you know I'm you know five six years old and he he carry me and my brother out of our beds and put us in the back of the Suburban and you know we'd sleep the whole way sometimes we'd compete up here in Sacramento so he would just drive us to the to weigh-ins and uh, we'd weigh in and we'd always go eat McDonald's after I'd get an egg McMuffin and that was our like ritual thing and just wrestle so yeah my dad was a very very big influence on me. The fight is in Brazil as I mentioned before you are you know having to travel to Brazil this is uh, Aldo's you know hometown or home country yeah. And, um, you know, you're, you're going to be going into a hostile crowd. You know, it's his crowd. Um, what, you know, how, how do you take those distractions away? Or how, you know, mentally, how do you prepare yourself for that? Type yeah, of that's, that's actually a tough one. Um, I'd never been to Brazil. I just went this last week for the first time. I went down there for the press conference. They had me fly there for a day. And I got to kind of check everything out and just see where I'm going to be staying. You know, what the food is like around me. Um, you know, there, it's pretty cool. The beach is like right across the street from the hotel. So, you know, if I wanted to cut some weight and then go kind of hang out at the beach, maybe jump in the ocean, it's, it's going to be a cool spot to chill. So um, that was kind of cool just to go check it out. And then I flew back. Um, but yeah, I mean, the crowd in Brazil, I, I didn't go to the last UFC, but I heard it was pretty crazy. Um, there was a lot of beer being thrown everywhere. You know, the guys with the, the computers running the, the whole live feeds were getting beer thrown on their laptops and stuff. And it was pretty crazy. And, and that's when the Brazilians were winning. I mean, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like if one of them loses. But, uh, yeah, so it, it can be pretty crazy. I'm, uh, I'm expecting some pretty rowdy, you know, people. But, I mean, I'm kind of looking at it as, you know, like Rocky, you know, when he goes into Russia and faces the Russian, you know, on his home turf. And, you know, to me... It's what better way to prove to the world that I'm the best featherweight. I mean, to go in his backyard and beat him, you know, and bring that belt back to the United States, is, it's going to be a huge statement, and I'm, you know, very excited and looking forward to get in there and do it. Can't wait, man. January 14th can't come any closer. You know, I like know. Our, it's like <laughs> so, you know, it's so close, but so far away, um, you know. Count, I'm counting down the days. So championship <clears throat> title training, you know, is, is, has training changed dramatically Compared to like just you know not, not even though not you know the other fights aren't just regular fights mm -hmm. but obviously this is for the title so is training kind of changed absolutely uh, hasn't changed like tremendously I mean we we've added some stuff to the camp um, obviously it's my first five five I've I've never fought five fives before it's three fives so um, that's probably going to be the biggest difference um, uh, on top of facing probably the most dangerous fighter that I've ever faced so. Um, We've, we've just changed up the chaining in, in sense that we're going more rounds. Um, you know, I'm training for more of a Muay Thai, more of an explosive fighter. Um, but overall, I mean, other than that, I'm, I'm training with all the same people. Um, you know, Uriah Faber, Joseph Benavidez, we got TJ Dillashaw, Danny Castillo, uh, Justin Buckles. All these guys are coming together and just really helping me out in this camp. And uh, I'm feeling like this is the, the hardest and the smartest I've ever trained. I mean, my cardio, my conditioning. Uh, you know, I feel on, on point and, you know, just really, really excited to get in there and, and show everyone what I got. What advice would you give uh, an up-and-comer that, for example, you know, is out in the valley or from Hanford mm -hmm. that, you know, wants to be a fighter, wants to be in your shoes one day? You know, what, what steps would you, would you recommend that they take? Well, I think first off, learning the basics is probably one of the most important things anybody can do in any kind of sport. A lot of the times you get guys coming in and you know, you jump right into all the flashy stuff or you just get so consumed with looking good compared to just learning the, the simple basics. And a lot of times people get caught or you just, you know, you make mistakes because of it. And I think learning basics is, is key. Uh, and also enjoy what you're doing. If you're doing something for the wrong reasons, a lot of the times you're not going to do well at it. I mean, if, if you get into fighting for, 
let's say you want to be famous or you know you you just want people to notice you and you know you're in it for the wrong reason. I mean, this is a tough sport, uh, especially nowadays. It's, every fighter is so evolved. Uh, it's not like the old days where you get a guy that's just good at jujitsu or just good at you know boxing or kickboxing. You know, every fighter is now pretty well rounded. So uh, stick to the basics, have fun, and uh, get out there and do what you do. Um, other than that, I mean, fighting is has been a great, great uh, thing in my life. I mean, I get to travel, like I said, all over the world. I get to meet new people. Um, you know, st I get to do stuff that I probably would never have done in any other job. Um, you know, this is a very unique uh, uh, occupation, and you know, you, you get to go through some pretty crazy things. But um, you know, it's and it can be tough. I mean, I'm getting punched, kicked, and knee elbowed in the face all the time, and. Um, but I think if you, if you train smart and you go about it the right way, uh, you get in, you make your money, you know, you save and you do the things you need to do right, you should be pretty set when you're done. One of the main questions that we wanted to ask you today was, who is, who's your idol? You know, who's somebody that you look up to that you, you know, growing up or even just in this, in this sport mm -hmm. wanted to be like and wanted to one day, you know, walk in their footsteps? Uh, actually, Uriah Faber is probably that person. Uh, Uriah is... is is like a brother to me. Um, like I said, he took me in. I didn't have any money after college. Uh, I didn't have a place to stay. He let me stay in his house. Um, you know, basically paid me to teach the, the team wrestling. You know, it's something that I knew. You know, that was pretty easy. So, <clears throat> you know, gave me money, gave me a place to stay, and really helped me get my career started. So, you know, I owe a lot to Uriah. Um, like I said, he's a brother, like basically like a brother to me. And, uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's a great, great opportunity for me in life to, to know a person like that. So What a great story, man. <clears throat> so, last question, January 14th, what happens? <laughs> I'm going to go to Brazil, Rio. Uh, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to take the belt and bring it back to the United States. Uh, hopefully, uh, I don't get mauled in the <laughs> process, but, um, you know, that's the plan. You know, I'm, I'm training hard, like I said, the hardest and smartest I've ever trained. Feeling great and uh, I feel like this is my time. Chad, Hanford will be watching. We'll all be there together supporting you on, man. And when you bring that belt back, we'll be sure to party with awesome. you after that, all right? I can't wait. Cool, Thanks, man. Guys. Thank you so much. Cool.